I made it through another day's journey. God kept me here. And I want to know, do you believe it? I made it through another day's journey. God kept me here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. I'm not going to be on, yeah, I ain't going to lie. I'm going to be on here a minute. And I hope that you have the stamina and the patience to deal with what I want to talk about. Um, You know, and I, I, I want to shout out to some my content creators, and I want to challenge them. Myself included, because I've done videos about the city mayor, and we all have done it, okay, from uh, O'Shea Duke Jackson, um, Hannibal is Hungry, a Pink Book Lessons, and I've even called out some of you guys and um, laughed at some of our content. But this is a real, real serious time, and it's an extremely serious time for those of us in America. I know O'Shea, you in uh, uh, Uganda, uh, and and I know it's not going to affect you directly. Emotionally, it should, but I know it's not going to physically affect you. It's affecting those of us who live here more than anything, and I think... A lot of us are mixing up the aberrations like Tiffany Henyard uh, and the other woman that won't leave her apartment. That You know, all these, those are, are aberrations. And I really mean this. But when we start talking about people who done the right thing, I don't see none of us. And I'm putting myself in there, so I'm putting my feet to task as well. I don't see none of us doing content about the injustices of black women that have tried to do the right thing and stand up for justice and then they get shitted on and we allow that or we say, oh, we don't see that or we just wait and see how that play out. And I'm speaking in about none other than Marilyn Mosby over there in Baltimore. Everybody know Baltimore is one of the worst, highest places for you know, black men that incarcerated, and uh, it's just a hellhole, okay? Which most areas that are occupied by us are, and you think that's that's by design, okay? For those of y'all who don't understand that, just see if you can buy the book, The Color of Law, and if you can't, uh, holler at me. I'll make sure that you get the book. This is how important that it is, okay? Because if you haven't read the book and you don't understand the matrix of what's going on, all this stuff is by design, okay? Marilyn Mosby right now is fighting for her life. And they trying to prosecute, they have prosecutor. In fact, she, her trial is coming up. Uh, and they have prosecuted her Basically over five thousand dollars, and then they convicted her of taking her own money during COVID because she decided she wanted to buy a house. She didn't know how unstable it is money she worked for, and we don't have no smoke for this, y'all. We have to be able to see, and we have to defend our own. Willie Lynch said we're gonna be perpetually miserable, perpetually miserable. This is why ADOS is so important. This is why you have to understand the tribe you fit in. The tribe we fit in is full of injustices. You don't see no Asian American, uh, Af Asian or Jamaican uh, <laughs> American people who are in these offices that are dealing with what we deal with on a daily basis. Y'all don't, 
don't even want to deal with the fact that what they're doing to her, the tactics that's being done on Marilyn Mosby, is revenge. Because of that, not just Freddie Gray. Listen, I was listening to the podcast, what they call it, what is it, the Native Land? Uh, um, you know, it's with Angela Rye and my man uh, that was in Florida, I can't think of him, and the and the woman that got kicked off of, uh, well, she left. She They fired her, as they do with all of us, okay, of, of people of color. Let's tell the truth. Quit acting like we're delusional when we talk this stuff, this talk. You know, listen, a lot of us got balls and we wear them on our chest. A lot of y'all ain't got them at all. Y'all got them down there and they just hanging. Then you ain't using them for nothing. Okay? Because if you really want to be a man about it, let's put Tiffany Henyard down for a minute and let's talk about what's being done to Marilyn Mosby who is a district attorney who did the right thing forget about Fani right now because a lot of y'all want to crucify her because she has sex with this dude yet on another channel or another time and space y'all be talking y'all will be uh, up 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 in our less leash black love black love Okay, make up your mind. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stay with it because I think it's more important. I, Tiffany on a program, Native Son, what is it, Native Land, says something uh, very important, and I think that they can they can say it better than me. Okay, because I get a little frustrated. Okay, but I just want you to listen to the next few minutes of Angela Rye and them from Native Land, okay, and their podcast. And when talking about Marilyn Mosby and her plight, and if y'all can't get behind this, what are we doing? If we can't be ADOS and stick together and understand what is happening, you know, our numbers are going up, and they say about, what, 2040, we'll be a majority. But that don't mean nothing because in black in Africa, they are the majority. And you got these demonic forces with the same energy ruling over there is the same elite demonic class that's trying to make you regurgitate injustice as righteousness and you're going to go along with it. Let's just check out Tiffany and her explanation about what happened with Marilyn Mosby. Because they're trying to destroy her. Joe Biden, she campaigned for you. You got to pardon her. Like Donald Trump, pardoned all those drug dealers. Listen, you better wake up, sleepy fucking Joe. She campaigned for you. Brought you votes, Kamala. And y'all going to let her go out like this? Okay, let me shut up. I want to get into a story that we teased last week about Marilyn Mosby. So let's go to a quick break, and then I want to pick that up on the other side. You brought up a really good point about um, what will you do when you're in power, and somebody who was in power and held the line for black folks is now in the line of fire. And I we talked right. about this a little bit last week, and I want to talk about it this week. Um, Marilyn Mosby, she is the former um, district attorney for the city of Baltimore. And for our younger viewers or people who may have uh, forgotten, I just want to remind you all how we came to know Marilyn Mosby. This was the Freddie Gray case um, in the city of Baltimore. You all remember Freddie Gray was uh, arrested in um taken for a death ride, essentially. And to custody um, in the back of yes, a police and, truck. Absolutely. Um, and he later died from injuries sustained there. And Marilyn Mosby charged those officers. And I just want to remind our viewers of what that moment meant to us yeah. when she stood on the steps uh, of, of Baltimore. So let's listen to her, and then we'll, we'll talk about it on the other side. The findings of our comprehensive, thorough, and independent investigation coupled with the medical examiner's determination that Mr. Gray's death was a homicide, which we received today, 
has led us to believe that we have probable cause to file criminal charges to the youth of this city. I will seek justice on your behalf. Oop! They gonna get her. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies that will develop structural and systemic changes for generations to come. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. I thought it was so important to play that because it was such a moment. And I want to remind people that the role of a DA, because uh, Vice President Kamala Harris also was, you know, essentially attacked on the campaign trail um, because people feel like you're a cop, you put people away. Let me explain something. The role of a DA is to decide who to charge, what charges to bring. That is important when, because they also decide who not to charge right. and what charges not to bring. Right. So you need people who look like us in those positions. It was grossly uh, unreported on. When the media started paying more attention to those types of things and, and uh, happening in uh, different uh, bureaucracies and, and different municipalities, we saw a sweep of more black people being elected in those positions. These are elected positions. Right. So this is why, to Andrew's point, those down ballot races matter just as much. Uh, Marilyn was elected to that position. She pissed off a lot of people. The police unions were very upset with her um, after that happened. And vowed vengeance. And vowed vengeance and played the long game. And so, Angela, I know this is something that you have been closely uh, monitoring. I know you talked to some, some sources on the ground, so I'd be, love to hear, because I know that she's been charged with things and um, convicted at this point, but I'm not really clear on all the charges and what exactly she did. Yeah, I want to just double down a little bit in what you were just saying about Marilyn's role. Marilyn was a force to be reckoned with as the Baltimore City State's Attorney. And the thing was, I was assuming this was all because of Freddie Gray, but it actually is much deeper than that. Freddie Gray was 2015. In 2016, the Department of Justice released a report on um, Baltimore, um, Baltimore Police Department's patterns and practices of just like so many violations. I mean, I can go through them. There's a, a there's, consent decree. There's a laundry list. Yes, they were under consent decree after. Explain the, what consent decree. A consent. Uh, simply, simply stated, when the Justice Department comes in and they have recognized or observed a consistent pattern of misconduct, the Justice Department then has the right to step into that agency to uncover whatever it needs to uncover and then to basically put them on a diet or an action plan would be a better description. Probation. Probation. Yeah. But also with a, with a set of actions, steps that you are supposed to take to cure yeah. the, the harm it's that... A, it's important for listeners created. to understand that because sure. a lot of time on cable news platforms, they'll say these things like DOJ and consent decree. People yeah. don't know, so I think it's important. In, in fact, yeah. it's important to underscore that most of the consent decrees that have come down over the history of DOJ have been to right wrongs that have mostly been perpetuated against black folks Absolutely. all across the country. Absolutely. So... Now... I want to say this because I don't want to lose my train of thought. The Department of Justice is so important, but we know it don't operate as it should. The FBI, the CIA, uh, um, all these professional hitmen and um, political hitmen. With the Department of Justice, it has to operate under the pretenses that it says, otherwise we doomed. And black people voting for Trump ain't going to help your black ass. You thinking you being a Republican or a Democrat or whatever, you have to start thinking about who are you better off bringing the force of yourself down on and getting the opportunity or getting the justice that you require. You're not going to get it with Mayor Garland, in my opinion. I think the Justice Department needs to a complete overhaul. And it should be manned by black people, Native American people, specifically. Okay? And I don't mean those who want to simulate into white culture. I want a Native American who's not afraid to stand up and say, I'm a Native American. I want an ADOS 
who's not afraid to say I'm from a descendant of a slave, from descendant of slavery here in America. Okay? I want to see um, a, a Mexican-American there, okay, that wants to talk about how this, well, they in California, how this was all part of my land anyway. We were ran off by the colonizer and then have a colonizer. They can't infiltrate. The white st power structure can't infiltrate all these offices because we already know what, what it's going to be. It's going to be full of shit because they are the colonizer and they are the sons and the daughters of the colonizer. And they got all kinds of fancy words, but they will never, ever, ever concede or they will, their power. Okay? That's just the name. That's just the way it is. They ain't never going to give it up. So you're going to have to take it. And some of us are going to die having to take it. And I don't just mean those my age, okay? That's what we got the young people for, the youth. Y'all got to get, it is, you don't, I can't say you only got a couple months. <laughs> so, because that's Rufus, because really not a party is going to save us. We too far gone. So either we're going to have to take our rightful place of who we are, because you see they're trying to replace us. And we're going to have to figure out who represents they try. And this is how you're going to take bring justice back into the Department of Justice. This is how you're going to do that. Okay? So even if you got two, even if you just mandatory have to have two white people and one of everybody else, I know that if four other races of people who are not afraid to speak up for their people, you already going to, you're going to, you're going to, uh, lose the the vote okay so y'all too ain't gonna stand up against righteousness especially if the white people that they pick i'm sorry the elite class or the european that they pick that has the same mind as the uh, british colonial uh, uh colonizers who just continue their work over here right I want y'all to hear Angela because I, I don't want to talk too much. Let me let you hear her. So in addition to the um, Freddie Gray case, the consent decree, because you all know that she did charge six officers in the Freddie Gray case and was not successful. But after that, none of the officers were convicted, correct? Not that I remember. Uh -huh. okay, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah not no. that I remember. So after that, Maryland went on to successfully prosecute 33 police officers on various convictions. There was a gun trace task force um, in 2017 where eight officers were charged and convicted by 2018 um, relating to stealing money, stealing products, like all types of corruption. She was successful in that. Um, in addition to that, she worked with um, a delegate in Maryland by the name of Eric Barron, who you will hear more about later. I'll go back to that, but she also um, was she told people when she came into office that she was not going to prosecute any weed convictions. Folks were upset about that. Um, a lot of low-level offenses yeah. she, she, she declined she, to prosecute. Yes, and specifically around um, weed, she was marijuana. like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, marijuana, oh, cannabis, no. yeah. she was not going to do that. She worked on a bill um, with a former state delegate, Eric Barron, and that bill was a vacature statute um, in 2019. And she, and from that, also worked to remove um, the convictions of eight hundred uh, of eight hundred plus cases from the thirty three. Uh, sorry, from the eight officers that were associated with the gun trace task force. What is so a vacature over, statute? Oh, she over to vacate previous yes. previous uh, guilty verdicts, Got or okay. if there were uh, negotiations between and somebody you know cop to being. Having done what you said I did, mm -hmm. whether they did it or not, Got it. Okay. Or less a sentence, so she vacated those previous orders. Got it. Okay. Then, in addition to that, um, helped to exonerate 13 innocent black men. Oh, they came. Um, oh, and oh she worked no. Worked through her crime control and prevention division to um, develop and foster relationships that are healthy relationships with the justice system with 7,000 young people. Wow. When she was um, voted out of office in 2022. 
her opponent basically has undone all of those reforms. Wow. Um, they were mostly funded by Sinclair um, Broadcasting. and um, uh, So Sinclair Broadcasting is a conservative outlet. What do you mean they were funded? Which which runs probably Campaign. any local... Wherever you live, Sinclair right. Broadcasting That's is right. in your neighborhood. That's but right. you're, you're saying they funded this guy's campaign against yeah can i can i just say yourself. one thing really quickly in full disclosure i worked with nick mosby maryland's uh, either soon to be ex-husband or ex-husband on a campaign so i know a little bit about baltimore it has the highest concentration of formerly incarcerated individuals um it, it did at the time that number may have shifted so high is this number that on campaigns when people run for mayor um, the formerly incarcerated are organized enough mm. that they endorse candidates. They hold candidate forums, and they it is impressive to see. Oh, and it's mostly um, black men, probably 98% black men, wow. um, who have you know served their time, whether it was deserved or not, but yeah. as if we all know it's a very unforgiving criminal justice system, and have come out and used their political power. And they, I know Marilyn Mosby and Nick would both engage them, so her work seems stellar. And Sorry you, to and interrupt you. No, I'm glad that you said that. I think the thing to know now is fast forward past all of that success. There's little black kids that now are like, oh, I actually can be a prosecutor. I yeah. see myself reflected in this. My family members who I thought would normally be on the other end of what I've done would actually be helped by me being in office. Maryland has been severely punished. So since then, Maryland has faced um, several counts of perjury, of making false mortgage applications. She was tried in November of 2023 for... Um, and I'm sorry, convicted in November 2023 of two counts of perjury. Um, the charges were related to withdrawing of funds from the city of Baltimore's deferred compensation plan. That's as if if you had a 401k, if you're in corporate on the Hill, we had thrift savings plan. Um, so this is her money? Her money that she's... Like a retirement plan. Her re so, 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 so even better than a retirement plan, a deferred compensation plan is like... You're supposed to get thirty more thousand dollars a year in your salary, mm -hmm. except you defer that thirty thousand into a retirement plan That's or into right. a savings account that acts like a retirement plan, which you can borrow from at any point in time, and it accrues interest. But the interest is paid back to yourself. This is so she went through that money. money. Wow. Yes. Okay. Holy and her money. so um, she claimed adverse financial consequences during the COVID pandemic. Let's just pause right there. Then the two withdrawals that she took out, I want to make sure I hit these amounts. Yeah. They are very important. $40,000 and $50,000. So that's for a total of $90,000. The deferred compensation plan um, is a 457B, and it's a COVID-related distribution request. The executive director of this deferred compensation plan, his name is David Randall, testified on the stand that a hardship, it's not a hardship, it's an ad adverse financial consequence, and an adverse financial consequence could be $50. If you were hit by $50, you, can, you would qualify for being able to withdraw this money. The Department of Justice argued that she didn't experience financial hardship, which is an objective standard. It's the an, subject, I was going to say, how do you even The subjective standard is an adverse financial consequence. So they were arguing two different standards. And Angela, mm -hmm. just, just to say further about the objectiveness of it, yeah. the reason why it is further objective is because you can't go to a computer and put in a reason and it then re it, it put out an approval or denial. An individual must hear a reason, and that individual then decides whether or not you meet it or you don't. So there are guidelines, but it's almost, it is almost 100% subjective and as she, it relates and to the And she was able authority. to withdraw. And the, the point is... Which meant an employee DOJ, had to approve of it. The, right. DOJ, the Department of Justice, said she, she didn't experience financial hardship, again, or arguing that objective standard because she received her full salary. Now, here's where I want to pause as black people. How many of us know she makes a, a, on the north on the other side of two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year as a prosecutor? She's the breadwinner for her family. Yeah, at that point. her husband is in the city council, which pays very little. But forget about him. Her ex-husband, mama, I say. dad, cousin, and then right, her three mother. Mother. Really? Yes. that everybody knows is and making she has two young so children, two so young if, girls. If anyone went through the pandemic, remember, like we have to put ourselves there. Yeah. 
We don't know when this thing is going to end. Right. We don't know how long we're carrying the people in our family. That is an adverse financial consequence. Yeah. You don't get to decide that for her. So right. this is all of, of what's, at, at, what's at play in this November trial. Um, they said there's no definition for what an adverse financial consequence, consequence is. That is why 739 people in the city of Baltimore who have on the same deferred compensation plan withdrew money from that. Three of them were in the same agency as Marilyn Mosby, but she's the one. How many were prosecuted or charged? I, do, I think Marilyn is the only one right. because they're making an example out of her. So this is very clear. Marilyn, at this point, her marriage is on the rocks. Mm -hmm. She is thinking about home ownership and the fact that she does not own a home because her name is not on the family home, mm -hmm. and she's trying to figure out how to get on her feet with her, her two girls, hence those two withdrawals, because they are going to be used, she hopes, to buy a home for them. Now, the potential, cons or potential sentence for the two perjury counts she was convicted on is three years. I'm sorry, five years. Now, let's go to February 2024, because that's not it. They bifurcated the trials. They bifurcated the charges. So she's tried on this um, first set of issues. Now there's the mortgage application issue. So, so right now, it's five years. for the tr well, You just explained that she's facing five years. Yes, she's not been sentenced yet from the November case, because okay. they were waiting to sentence her altogether after the February case. So in February, uh, just last month, she was facing two counts of making false mortgage applications. She was found guilty and convicted for one of those uh, counts. They say that she made seven misrepresentations in her mortgage application, um, including um, not sharing that there was a delinquent tax lien. Nick has already testified, Nick Mosby's already testified in court that he lied to her about clearing that lien. So she, the, the mortgage application was answered to the best of her knowledge. Um, Stop. How many brothers or sisters that lied to their spouse or their significant other? Let's just keep it honest. So, uh, how many of us, if the house, what if it was in his name before? Because you clearly say she said the house wasn't in her name. If he just said, "Hey, I took care of that." How many of us can't do nothing but go along with it, right? Think about it. And if you say, oh, I would have did this, oh, I would have done that, usually that's not what you probably do, just the opposite of what you're saying. Shall we continue? They said that she was not supposed to use the property as a rental property. Put a pin in that. We'll get back to that later. That she lied about a gift that she received from Nick. Um, in the amount of $5,000, and that she wasn't um, honest about a revolving account. They thought the tax lien should go on the revolving account. It's a whole mess. This is a mortgage application. I think those of us who have ever owned a home, there are a lot of things that you're doing to just try to get to the finish line in this process. And she was told by her mortgage broker, mortgage broker testifies to this, that he told her um, that she could not withdraw the $5,000 from the shared account she has with her child. She put her daughter on her checking account. You cannot pay for the $5,000 earnest money with a minor's account. So they said, um, do you have a joint account? She said, yes. He said, well, can you get the money from your husband? She says, sure, I'll ask him for it. But she was not sure if he had it based on the tax lien situation. She asked him for the money. Um, not sure that he has it because black women are always going to fill in the gap. Right. She deposits the money. And he can give it back to her, but to a different account. They decided that this is some type of mon money laundering enterprise. Okay, yes. Wow. Right? Wow. And the, like, it's, wow. It's, all, it's this craziness. So anyway, the jury acquitted her on the Kissimmee property, but convicted on the Long Boat Key property. Both of them are Florida condos. At issue is mostly is this $5,000 gift from her husband, and the prosecution is claiming that it was this whole money laundering operation. The thing that stresses me out about this is just from this piece alone, Marilyn is facing 30 years in no. prison. No. So is this in addition to so she could get 35 years? Yeah, she could. She this is could. a mother. This is a mother But of even two beyond girls. that, this is, wow. I, I know we said we're not cussing that much on this podcast, but this is 
bullshit yeah. and to, to tap into the bullshit. Scott Bolden, who was her attorney on the first case, went on the court steps and said, this is bullshit. Scott threatened to be held in criminal contempt. Because you can't speak ill about the court. Wow. Um, but he was wow. on the court steps. But Donald Trump is walking no, no, free no, no. right now. No, no, no. He, he's clear. The, the, he's clear. The, the, he's clear. The, I, he's making I a point. I got the same threat. That's crazy. Uh, uh, in I, my that's case. I want to hear him because you, you face cannot, this. But... You cannot insult the court. The so court is the, the judge. Thing. And here's and the everything thing. under his purview. This is, I said I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to tell y'all. The delegate, the former delegate who she worked on the yeah. legislation with, the, um, the Eric, Eric, whatever his name is. is. Yeah. The vacature statute yeah. is the prosecutor in the case. Oh, my God. Go, Daddy, go! Whoa, you need the experts. Oh, my God. Did y'all hear that? The is the prosecutor in this case? And he, did he decide to do this, or was he instructed to do this? Well, that's you can always say no. So, so you can mm -hmm. quit. You can. Right. Do, but here's my other thing: Eric Barron is a black man, a U.S. attorney who was appointed by this administration. Wow. This judge who was threatening to hold Scott in criminal contempt of of the court. Um, and which then put him in conflict to not be able to represent Marilyn in the <sighs> second trial. She then had to get a public defender in the second trial. The judge who threatened to hold him in the cr in criminal contempt of the court, black woman appointed by Joe Biden as well. So this again, is uh, this is I it know is a huge nightmare. No, no, no. So and these are federal things. charges. Just, federal charges facing thirty five years in prison for what? Like, can I? Yeah. So you just name check the identity, the, the the race of these individuals who were culprits in this all. I made the point earlier about power. Mm -hmm. And I said it was in many ways, without regard to race, and power I'm stands on it. I know, I know you're not dumb, but I want to pull back just for a second. Yeah. Because, yeah. first of all, to learn of the particulars is to just grow more frustrated by the whole thing. Because I think the greatest offense occurred when you pull back to there ever being charges in the first That's place. Exactly I would like right. to know how many times the U.S. attorney in this district has brought similar like charges to any other Correct. common person mm -hmm. in Correct. the city. Because this, 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 this gets at the heart of selective prosecution. Right. Mm -hmm. Selective prosecution, which is a defined term in the Department of Justice. Yep. Um, the, 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 the United States Department of Justice understands what it means to select because of who the person is. To then decide to go after them for reasons or causes that you have never pursued anyone else. Yeah. yeah. It's never targeted. Never pursued yeah. anyone else. It is targeted. And, and it's to target... make an example out of her. And it's right. not just for anybody who becomes a prosecutor in Baltimore. It is for black but, prosecutors right. across the country. But let's just country. state plainly what the example is. Yeah. The example is this woman had the unmitigated gall to turn a system that has survived generations, mm -hmm. that has survived mm -hmm. ancestors, that has survived and is a, it is a critical part of upholding the status quo yeah. as they know it. Yeah. If police officers in Baltimore now know that they can be held accountable for their illegal activity yes. while under the cover of the badge, y'all, are you kidding me? Why? She, yeah. she has... She, I, I cannot yes, overstate I can't. on this podcast how critical her disruption has been. I would say that Marilyn Mosby was at the tip of the spear of prosecutors around this country deciding that it was okay to then pursue prosecutions exactly right. of law yes, enforcement yes. officers. So her example is not just about being in Baltimore. Right. Her example it is larger than any of us will ever be able to put words well, I have a question for you, if I may. Th this woman, um, well, both of you, really, we cannot let, she held the line for us as a community, and she faced and squared off against the system. You, too, have squared off against the federal government and lived to tell about it, which is not a very common thing. You are an attorney. We cannot let this happen. She held the line for us. We need to hold the line for her. What can we do now to make sure that she does not see one day of jail time? I'm not talking about a reduced sentence. This mother of two who survived 
a hard upcoming upbringing in Boston, Massachusetts. Went to Tuskegee, I believe, is the word she and Nick met in Alabama. She's the daughter and the great granddaughter of law enforcement officers. Yes, her, 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 yes, she comes from law enforcement. We cannot let this happen to her. What What would have been helpful to you when you were going through this, and Angela as an attorney? Like, what What can the people listening do? So where we are, I mean, I, I'll just say what would have been helpful, obviously, would have been the resources to bring a fight that matched the enemy, the, the, your opposition, right? I needed the strength, both legally, but also financially, mm -hmm. to wage that war. There are people sitting incarcerated today, far too many, who didn't necessarily commit the crimes that they were accused of, but they did not have the resources, the wherewithal, or the stomach to potentially risk being away from their children, their mm -hmm. family, a day longer than was necessary, right? And so they say, I'll cop to this because 99.9% .9 of cases that the that Department of Justice sense. brings, either they settle or they win in court. I'm part of what is known as the three percenters. Wow. The three percent who fight back and then beat their ass. Yeah. Wow. And beat their ass because they're liars. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, I'm not casting all ex excursions, but you do understand how closely hand-in-glove law enforcement and they prosecutors' officers oh, it's, are. It's, 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 it's prosecutors enmeshed. don't bring cases yeah. without the support and the wherewithal of, of, of law enforcement. Law enforcement doesn't work these cases up to then go present it to the attorney Watch your water. without what do we the do? support of the attorney. So what... I don't know if she's got a fund, a, a, a setup, uh, a legal defense fund, but it sounds to me like there are many grounds for appeal, but yeah, I also think appealing. that there are political grounds under which this department should not have been and is not within its rights if we were to pay attention to the letter of the law under uh, uh, this targeted prosecution to have been bought charges in the first place. This, they wouldn't it, sneeze at $5,000 at the Department of Justice. It began under Donald Trump. And the first thing that I would say is, Merrick Garland, what are you going to do to separate yourself from a different Department of Justice Don't hold the breath. administration? Like, but I'm saying it's time for somebody to ask him that. I think that Merrick Garland needs to resign. He is, he is really, like, culpable in a lot of ways. And this whole targeting of black elected officials that has been, it doesn't matter who's in office, really. Yeah. They will just target black elected officials. And I think that is where we get into the nuance of partisanship and when we don't see ourselves reflected in something that we voted for. We stood up for you. We, we protected you. You were going to be a Supreme Court justice for right. us. I went on air defending your ass when I did not believe in your ability to really protect our interests on the Supreme Court. And then this is how you repay us? But like, he's not going to resign. So I, 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 I want him to resign. We, we can, but I'm saying realistically and tangibly. I don't yeah. think that what can we do to help Maryland right I'm now. Sure, but I, I, I'm just, just a part of it because what I'm getting at is he is listening to this man named Leo Wise. Why does this matter? Leo Wise was the chief counsel for the Office of Congressional Ethics when it was stood up. Nancy Pelosi came in saying, we're going to be tough on ethics. So they stood up this whole office that targeted CBC members. Congressman Waters was subject to an ethics investigation by the same man. What does Leo Wise have to do with Maryland? He went to DOJ. He was the one that worked up Maryland's case. This is now under Donald Trump, and they still kept this going. Well, now it's under Biden. But what I'm saying, it started under Donald Trump, though. The it investigation started, into me and the plot to 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 was that to under Donald trap Trump trap as me well? was under Barack Obama. Well, so, wow. so let me just it's say that, this, which saying, is that these institutions it, exist without touching their heads. But, right, but my point systemic. is that until someone is held to account for how that system is operating, it is going to continue. Like, they need to clean house. It shouldn't just be Merrick Garland. It should be that whole department. That There needs to be an Office of Inspector General report on what is happening in there and the targeting of elected officials. How dare you prosecute someone for 5000 goddamn dollars when Donald Trump has 91 indictments? Are you kidding me? And y'all are twiddling your thumbs trying to figure out what to do with him, how to go at him, and this right. is what you're... To, like, the government... Wait a minute. No, no, no. The you resource... Yeah. that are being spent, the taxpayer dollars that are being spent on this trial, this is millions of dollars yeah. for 5,000 goddamn dollars. My, but the thing is, if I'm Maryland, I'm like, what can no we do I know that, but so, what I'm saying like, is you have ask, to click. Did we ask the administration for a pardon? Yes, like, of what, course. Yeah. And we've been saying, we started that last week. Like, of course we go to the pardon. But this, I think Maryland would not just want us to protect just Maryland. 
yeah, this office true. has to be dealt with. Yeah. They have to be held to account. I, she should I, now I'm really receive what is the ask. So, so first of all, if and I appreciate you drawing us back to this because if you were listening and you're wondering why should I care about this thing? Why does this matter? This why do we have to listen to that level of detail? If you, if you are sincere, folks, and your desire, your need. For justice and the way it is administered in this country, for Maryland, for me, for names that we cannot call this moment, but we can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that somebody else is being raked over the coals ten times over by this same institution that has been built, stood up, and is largely operating to silence what are political enemies. Yeah. And Maryland matters. I am very humbly asking of you. Now, like she said, this dude got 94 counts. Donald Trump. Now we jump to Fani. Because when you really, really think about it, conflict of interest, I don't give a damn what nobody say, if I remember correctly. And I've been on the planet uh, long now. I might not know all the A, B, C, D, E, F, Gs. I done seen enough cases. I done spoke with enough attorneys. I done watched enough cases. Okay? That, uh, when you put it in perspective, finding uh, conflict of interest is really if she would have been going with somebody from the other side, from the prosecution side and prosecuting the um, a, a president, or if she, you know, the judge it's that not she was working with having sex with somebody on the uh, uh the same team as her. How many of y'all think that them you don't think them uh white folks get it in like that? Okay, I don't give a damn if I made a video or not. I don't want to hear you, O'Shea, talk uh comparing that damn crazy ass Tiffany. Henyard to what Fonnie Willis did. That is just insane. And for you to do your sister like that, no, you in Uganda, that's why you can talk that shit. You've been listening to too much Corey because it's coming out. That's some, something, something, something uh, Corey would say. Okay? Because let me tell you what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't do nothing like that. Fonnie, it did not do that. Now, if y'all mad because she came down, I said she should have fired dude. Well, she, she, they're not going to be able to prove how much money uh, he spent and she spent and they took the taxpayers' money and because of this, that's bull crap. And I don't think that that is what is really the, the, the genesis of this or the crux of this uh, investigation into how we get to prosecuting a damn ex-president that had 93 charges against him. Y'all better make it make sense. Shout out to make it make sense. How, how, how are we doing this? How are we doing it? Now, how scared are we going to be? Are we going to continue to put our tail between our legs and not talk what's real? Who really doing this shit? How can you, how dare you us? How dare us? So now because she did this with Wade, and it might, the total amount might come to 5000 and 8000 Same thing with the other woman. Don't matter what it is. These white men get to go through her sex life see because they freaks you see them every time they get caught it'd be something crazy so they want to go hear what she did so they want to hear the dick and pussy stories okay so they can sit back and get off all oh, you think about funny and wait uh-huh yeah i like yeah just like the, uh, it's like a slave master show they don't have to do all this and get her exposed out there like that. And how dare they? But we going to jump on the bandwagon and say, yeah, yeah, finally ain't nothing but this. How, uh, oh, God. Like, like Willie Lynch said again.
just implement everything I'm telling you. Pit the old sl slave against the young slave. Pit the lighter skin against the darker skin. Pit them all against each other. And this is what you stir that shit up. And we'll never ever go after the real enemy. Which is white supremacy. And these institutions of white supremacy that has been set up to put be a noose around our neck no matter how hard we fight. My father. Oh, listen. They, they'll find a way. You remember I told you I, I've witnessed, I bear witness to how they operate. Check it. They didn't want Mike McGee for whatever reason. They was tired of them damn McGee's in Milwaukee. They was tired of their asses. Okay. I think, I remember when they tried to shake Mike Sr. down. Said he was, uh, but then they ended up, I think, prosecuting uh, somebody that was with him. Saying he was going to these bars and getting money from as an alderman. But they couldn't get him. They didn't. They didn't have anything to, to uh, lay on the father. Okay, so they blamed it all on the son. I mean, the friend, uh, Mike's friend, and I think he did a few years. Then here come Mike Jr. All right, and then remember, Mike then took his ass on Jerry Springer and punched the Ku Klux Klan man in the damn face. I was like, oh, no, you didn't. Okay, fast forward. Now you got Charlie Sykes, who's on the radio right now, come on with what's the girl's name? Everybody like MSNBC. Uh, he used to be on with Mark Belling here in Milwaukee. There was, there was a, a racist conservative a radio show. So now he's on M, uh, MSNBC. What's the girl's name? Y'all know who I'm talking about. The white girl who's such a liberal. She used to be a Republican and now she's not. Okay, well, her. When Mike ran for, uh, get ready to run, run f when he was the older person, the junior one, they, they done put a whole sting operation with uh, uh, Burr Gonzalez. Charlie Sykes wrote a letter. And got upset because Mike said something about his mother. His mother had recently passed. And I think Mike said something like, I don't give a damn about her. <laughs> he just spoke from the heart. Like he always did. And he's an Aries, by the way. We coming up. But what I'm saying is Aries have a, a way with just bringing it. And that offend people. And we may not necessarily be trying to offend you. We're just trying to tell you what it is from our, our, our perspective, right? And so because we're so intuitive, we was just, it, it, it come out. And do you know that George Bush, then, then I start going, ooh, this shit getting deep now. Charlie Sykes um, left the radio station after that, 620. A.M., the Ku Klux Klan radio hour with Mark Belling. Then we had us. We campaigned because they tried to recall, and it was really a white woman from a, a, a guy from a Waukesha. Y'all done heard of Waukesha enough to know that Waukesha is, uh, is a white county. Waukesha, and they're real racist. Okay, they're racist. Somebody in Waukesha, Milwaukee is the own, is the biggest city. Somebody in Waukesha decided, I will pay this woman. This is politics is a dirty game. That's why I was like, ooh, no, 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 no. I'm a singer. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a studio musician. I don't do this. But I know what it is. I didn't know that it get that dirty. It was never explained to me by my father that it get this dirty. Okay? Maybe I should have been paying more attention. But at, at the end of the day, they in Waukesha ran a woman named Viana Jordan from Milwaukee 
to run against Mike. They they financed her campaign. These are all Republican, right wing, racist asses. And so she, they used her, but but she, he she lost. So Mike wasn't recalled. Okay, and we happy, you know, we like, yeah, we beat your ass once. Now let's get the work done. Mike was out here like a, like a a, a, a superhero, okay, um, getting rapists off the streets. Oops, rapists, I should have said probably, but no, no, this this is Patreon. So, getting people off the street that didn't belong there. But he also, according to them, was was making people, well, I know he did this one, making uh, a store that made a million dollars, right, on, in a small crux of the, of the heart of the black neighborhood. And what he did was he took those Arabs to task. He said, uh-uh. If you gonna take this money, you gonna be giving a damn back to school, uh, uh, you know, book bag giveaway or something. You ain't gonna just rob my our community of no million dollars and think you gonna get away with that shit. So they was mad because Mike was pay making them have these book bag and give these little black kids. I ain't saying that it's right; it was ethical, but I don't care about that. White folks do it all the time when they got older people. They take advantage of their positions, you know, in their little, when their communities. Because when they caught the white dude that had uh, a um, aldermanic position in a, in a black neighborhood, they put him in jail. See what I'm saying? It's a system that you ain't going to never, ever, ever get out of. Unless you st unless you stick together with the people who built it, just didn't implement the system, but built the country, and they decide that we can't go on no more like this. We can't go on. And sane and rational people, because they're doing everything now. And if you think about what he's saying about Marilyn Mosby, and I'm and I'm gonna shut my mouth. And you get to the end of this. When you think about everything, how dare they? How dare they do this to her? Political they enemies, though. It's, 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 it's support. Enemies. It's advocates for black justice. For it, it, well, the, Angela, who? But but then then ask ourselves, who doesn't want that? Right, who yeah, is standing in the right. way okay. of that thing happening? Yeah. So before her, there weren't prosecutors who were ever viewed as being separate from law enforcement. Prosecutors were not seen as separate from that. Grand juries, can you believe that grand juries in this country, which is a which we inherited from Great Britain when they were colonizing the world, every place they colonized got rid of the grand jury process except two places, the United States being one of them. And then we decided to ensconce it in our Constitution, in the Sixth Amendment, so on and so forth. But the grand jury was supposedly set up so that citizens could be sure that governments did not use its power to go after their own individual enemies. It was supposed to be a check on them. Yeah. What are they today? They are a rubber stamp. Yeah. Yeah. We hear that used, grand juries used to be filled with black women. They, and they mean nothing today other than a rubber stamp on prosecutors. All yeah. I'm saying here is this sister matters. If you forget her name, if you forget what her job title was, let me tell you, she is transformative to how justice can be perceived to, do, to be administered in a fair way that goes after every corrupter, that goes after nobody is above the law, not law enforcement and not a president. She exhibited that, she's now paying the cost of it. I know that there are people who are sitting in judgment about where they could have done this and they could have done that. She didn't do anything different than people who are going in every day getting mortgages. They figure out a way to make it happen. Yeah, and with their so own money and resources. With their own money, and they right. Didn't, that's the part that's that confusing. That is the part. And yeah. they didn't go out there trying to break some law and find themselves at the crosshairs of the federal government coming after them viciously. Yeah. Well, Marilyn now is in a position where she doesn't even have a car. Her grandmother is in hospice. She has cancer. He's uh -huh. trying to take care of her grandmother. She still has her two girls. 
mar I think the divorce is almost final if it's not final. This is such a tragic, catastrophic event. I cannot imagine how she's just making it. She's barely yeah. holding on. Mm. This is something that we need to call to attention. I'm just going to remind the listening audience, in case y'all don't know, when Kamala Harris was being called top cop and being raked over the coals for prosecuting black men, Marilyn is someone who they called on to defend her as a surrogate. And I would, this administration owes her a pardon, not because she campaigned for them, but because this is bullshit. And, and, I'm, and I, it is so wrong. It's and wrong I think and it's illegal it, under DOJ how guidelines. That? How about it that? It is illegal. The mm. practice is illegal. You have selectively targeted a person, not because of what they've done. You sought after. You selected records going back as far as 2014. You were after trying yeah. to catch her up on something. On and y'all, there were foundations. There were wealthy people. There were celebrities. There were others who lifted Marilyn up and held her as a she wrote in a heroine in our community yeah. because of what she did. Well, she is no less that person today. That's right. And she's deserving of our support and our outcry to this administration to make right what they have done wrong. Yeah. And so to They're this wrong. point, May 23rd is when she's supposed to be sentenced. They can absolutely tee up a pardon. And that's what we should ask our listening audience and our viewers to do. Tell this administration they should be pardoning Marilyn Mosby. Marilyn right. Mosby is the exact type of prosecutor this country needs. Everyone who's a prog progressive prosecutor right now is being faced with this type of animus, and I think that it's time for DOJ to be turned upside down. And there. last, before we go to a break and then come back with our asks of you, I want you to know that what this is attempting to send is a signal that if you even think about prosecutor running for prosecutor becoming prosecutor in the mold of a Marilyn Mosby you better think again so the shot over the bow is not to Marilyn they don't care that may they clearly they want her out of the way but the shot really is to the rest of us to say don't you dare even dream about it young man mm -hmm. young woman mm -hmm. little boy stay in your proper place do the proper thing well, yeah. And that's and, and and that's it. So just know that the opposite of doing nothing and allow this to happen is to allow them to win at this fight for achieving real justice uh, uh, in yeah. this country. We're never going to get there if this is what they can do to 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 seekers of justice. But Donald Trump got ninety one indictments, right? And we tell about five thousand dollars. Well, I honestly okay. just want to say thank you, Angela, because I You're I think here. it's important to hear. I want to thank um, the state of um, the state of our union was the name of the podcast, uh, but I want to thank Native Land for um, actually uh, reminding us uh, uh, this politic game, and I think that's so important because a lot of us think it's just a matter of jumping. Oh, I'm mad! I'm mad because we had personalities. I'm mad at the. Uh, Democrats and I'm mad at uh, Joe Biden and so I'm a vote for Donald Trump which is so immature it's so immature when there's a system in place that you got a man that's already telling you I'm I done did away with all even investigating these civil rights cases because y'all already know the president is who's behind it who's the marionette that's the system the queen them. <laughs> I mean, the laws are set up, and they either we're going to be willing to, um, you know, deal with that. That's, you know, and, and that's very important. I, I just think there's no other way um, to even get through this without us taking a look taking a look at what's really going on. Ask yourself the questions about Marilyn Mosby. Find if you can find, see if you can find some dirt on her. And then tell me, you know, and maybe you do. Maybe you do. But it wasn't even 94 counts. And you can't even see the connection between I'll prosecute her and see if I can get her in jail for 35 years on one count. 
But here's I got a person that's accused of 93. I got 93 in, uh, indictments. But I ain't going to let it go no further because I'm going to throw it all out. And I'm going to throw because of Fani having sex with uh, Mr. Wade. And that, in return, just dismisses all the shit that Donald Trump did. And he tried to have an insurrection, try to overturn election and dismiss all our votes. I mean, what? And then somebody got to convince you. I don't give a damn if you and if you, you if you black, in my opinion, you just crazy. You need some attention. And you so mad at the personality of Joe Biden because he didn't give us what we want. Well, we didn't fight correctly for what we want. We didn't fight correctly because if it come through anybody, if you think it's going to come through that Republican Party, you out of your mind. You have a better chance of starting the Adolf's party. Okay? And then every person that's brown, every person that's black, I mean, and a descendant of a slave, they will be in that party. Okay? And even, even, and then so those who agree with the tenements of that party, you already know where they vote will go. Well, I'm going to go. I just wanted to call out, because I know I've been way past my time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go, and I want y'all to think about that. Because they said something that was right. Well, I'm saying it. Power concedes nothing without a demand. The man is here now. We can't get around it. And whose side, what y'all going to do? Whose side you going to be on? You can't serve two masters. You're going to have to serve somebody. It might be the devil. It might be the Lord. But you're going to have to serve somebody. I'll see you in the next video.